So today we're going to talk about uh, zeros of polynomials. Uh, and before we get into that, uh, we'll go ahead and start with the definition of a polynomial. Um, a polynomial, as you can see on the screen, is a finite sum of terms uh, in which the powers of the variables are whole numbers. Um, now just to review, um, whole numbers uh, would be the numbers such as 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity, uh, including the number 0. Uh, so those would be the whole numbers, and uh, a requirement for something to be a polynomial is that the, the exponents on the variables are those numbers, those types of numbers. So we're going to start studying now uh, zeros of polynomials, which um, in its most elementary form is actually something that you, you should be somewhat familiar with. Um, so a zero of a polynomial uh, is really nothing more than the solution or a solution to a polynomial set equal to zero, um, which really, again, the, the familiarity to this uh, should be quite evident because a polynomial set equal to zero is essentially just you finding uh, the x-intercept. Uh, so that's what the majority of what we're going to be doing uh, in this section is, is just finding the x-intercepts. Um, and to simplify it, uh, to find an x-intercept or to find a zero. Uh, it's always a two-step process. First we always need to let y equal zero and the second thing is to solve for x. The solving part here, that's really where we're going to spend most of our time. Uh, you've studied um, a lot of polynomials uh, set equal to zero. Um, you've studied linear polynomials, quadratic polynomials, uh, but now we're going to move into bigger things which are going to require more advanced techniques. Um, so the first example that we're going to look at actually uh, is the linear polynomial ax equals b. Now to be clear we do know that this is linear uh, because all of the x and y the variables are of degree 1 so it is a polynomial and more specifically it's a linear polynomial. Um, to solve this uh, for the zeros we would take it we would set it equal to 0 um, and then we would just solve it for x. So x equals negative b over a. Uh, subtract the b divide by a, we get x all by itself. Very, very easy to solve a linear polynomial uh, to find the zeros of a linear polynomial. So now to, to continue the conversation uh, and study some of these more advanced techniques, uh, we'll start with a polynomial here, uh, f of x equals negative 4x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7. And we'll start with a very basic question, um, is x equals 3 a 0? Now, you should notice that this is a very clearly either a yes or no answer. Um, nothing more, nothing less, it's either a yes or no. Um, and if this is truly just the question, um, then the easiest way to determine whether or not x equals 3 uh, is a 0 of the polynomial would actually be just to take the function uh, and evaluate it at x equals 3. Um, this is the substitution method. If I take f of 3 and I evaluate my function here, that's going to be negative 4, a 3 cubed, plus a 5 and a 3 squared minus 7. This actually gives us negative 70. So <clears throat> when we look at what we found, um, we found that 3 maps to negative 70. Uh, and so if you understand what an x-intercept or a 0 is, you can clearly see uh, that the answer to our question would be no. Um, if this was truly an x-intercept, um, the y-coordinate would have to be 0. Um, and it's not, so the answer to, to this is no. Now, again, it only answers um, by substitution the yes or no question. Um, if we want more than a yes or no answer, uh, we'll need to study some different techniques. Uh, so I'll transition here into long division. And I'll go ahead and get this thing set up uh, with a negative 4x cubed plus 5x squared plus a 0x minus 7. Remember, we have to have our placeholder so that we decrease sequentially. And then I'm actually going to use an x minus 3 um, outside of the, the division uh, bar. So don't worry about the why I chose x minus 3 so much now. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, but watch what happens when we run this long division. So it looks like I'll need um, a negative 4x squared. 
so that when I take that and I multiply it back by the x minus 3, that's going to give me a negative 4x cubed plus 12x squared. Uh, we always have to remember to subtract so all of the signs change. Uh, and that leaves me with um, a negative 12x squared on the bottom. So 5x squared minus 12x squared gives us a minus 7x squared bring down the next term and repeat the process. Uh, so I'll need a negative 7x uh, so that when I distribute that through uh, I get my negative 7x squared uh, plus a 21x. And I'll subtract again. Uh, that leaves me with a negative 21x. Bring down the negative 7. And it looks like one more iteration. Uh, so negative 21 times x would be a negative 21x uh, plus a 63. We'll go ahead and we'll subtract one more time and you can see that actually gives us a negative 70 there at the bottom. Um, that negative 70 uh, that's of course the remainder um, and it's no coincidence that the remainder of negative 70 is also the y coordinate or the output uh, by the substitution method. Um, this is called the remainder theorem. Uh, that should happen like this every time, even though it might seem a little bit uh, um, uh, consequential uh, at this point, um, but it should happen every time. So notice, though, what happened. Not only were you able to answer the yes or no question by looking at this remainder, you also got a little more information out of the, the, the problem. You also ended up with a quotient. And here in a little bit, that quotient is going to be pretty important. So again, we're still able to answer no, but we were also able to get a little more information. So now the final uh, way that we're going to approach this is by synthetic division. Now, synthetic division is actually the best of both worlds from substitution and long division. Uh, it's going to be able to give us a yes or no answer pretty quickly, but it's also going to give us a quotient uh, without a lot of the mess that you would have had to deal with in long division. Um, so, as we look into synthetic division, what we're going to do is focus just on the, the numbers, just on the coefficients, the constants. So, I'm going to take negative 4, 5, 0 and negative 7, uh, similar uh, to what I, how I had it set up in using long division with that placeholder. And then I'm going to start with a 3 to the outside. Now, uh, since we're testing if x equals 3 is a 0, we'll put a 3 to the outside. And we'll start by bringing down the first uh, number, negative 4. Now I'm going to multiply the 3 and the negative 4 to get a negative 12. And then we'll add going down. So 5 and negative 12 give us a negative 7. And repeat, 3 times negative 7 gives us a negative 21. When we add, we get a negative 21. When we multiply the 3 and the negative 21, we get the negative 63. And when we add going down, uh, we get the negative 70. So if you notice, not only do we get the negative 70 there as the quote, uh, excuse me, as the remainder, as the remainder, there we go, um, which tells us that we're, we don't have a solution to the polynomial. Um, it also gives us the same negative 4, negative 7, and negative 21 that were the coefficients of the quotient a few minutes ago. So negative 4x squared minus 7x minus 21 would have been the quotient. So you can see synthetic division is nice in that it gives us a yes or no answer, but it also gives us the quotient uh, and without the big mess of long division. Uh, so we're going to use this now in, in order to solve some of these polynomials and try to find their zeros.